Okay, so the question about my journey, it's, you're saying it seems like the momentum is picked up for my business, yes. and what got me here? Yeah, what was that, yeah. Okay, so I, I started this, as far as I can remember, 2003. That's when it began. And I did a workshop. It was an evening... Uh, I did a few evening workshops and a weekend workshop. The first weekend workshop had three people, one of which didn't... One of them didn't come back the next day, on the second day. <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> and I... Uh, yeah, and so then for, I went down to Fairfield, Iowa, the home of the Maharishi University of Management, where half the town meditates twice a day. It's, uh, anyway, it's, it's a trippy town. And I had a workshop I was going to do, but my computer had crashed before I went, but a month before, and I couldn't promote it. Anyways, I was on the road, and I got there, and I had two evening intros. Nobody had signed up to the, my weekend workshop. I had three people, the first intro. It's so depressing and embarrassing when you teach marketing. Uh, <laughs> but I had 16 people, the second one, and I said, look, uh, nobody signed up for the weekend, but I'm here. So instead of charging, I was going to charge two grand or something. I said, instead of charging the full amount, let me um, just come, pay whatever you want at the end. That was the deal. And I had 12 people sign up. And they paid well. I thought I was just going to, oh, I'd already, well, you know, it's a learning experience and I'll make enough money to pay the flight, but I actually made some okay money. <coughs> and that's when I started with the pay what you can. Then for about five years, I was just doing intro workshops, like evenings, two or three hours, and I experimented with it for five years. People often say, okay, but the signature workshop, there's this thought, like, put me on stage in front of a thousand people. But if I said two choices, one, I can put you on stage with a signature kind of talk. You've got an hour to do your thing, share your point of view. And you have two choices. One, on stage in front of a thousand people or a hundred presentations for 10 people. I beg you to choose that second one. Do a hundred presentations to 10 people. That's what makes you ready for the thousand people. You go on stage for a thousand people, you're going to blow it. You'll lose, you know, you'll get off stage. Ah, I should have said this and all the learnings that naturally happen, but you do it a hundred times. So I did it, I don't know how many times, well over a hundred. And I just kept working that intro and it was frustrating because I do the intro and one night it would click. I got it. And I would do the same thing the next time and it wouldn't click. And I couldn't figure out why. Some nights it was clear and then other nights it seemed confusing. And I just kind of kept going. I didn't have anyone like me. You know, I was learning as I was doing it. Uh, but that was my whole business model. Free intro workshop to a pay what you can weekend workshop. Then one day, I got all these requests. People say, come to uh, Chicago, come to Israel, come to do a workshop over here. And I thought, man, I don't want to be traveling all the time. And one day, I, don't, I thought, I could do this online. What if I did the whole weekend workshop, all that content over six weeks? So I emailed my list. How much was it? 200 bucks, I think I put it up for. And yeah, 200 bucks. And I had 40 people sign up right away and I made $8,000 and that blew my mind. I couldn't believe I'd made $8,000 in a matter of a few days. Mm -hmm. I was floored. And immediately the pangs of regret of shit, I could have done this years ago. <laughs> didn't. But then I started doing more things online. So the business model got that added to it. And I started charging for the intros. Instead of the intros being free, I started just charging and I noticed that participation didn't seem to drop. And that was amazing too. I got $1,000 one intro. And I was just, I'm rich. I'm rich. <laughs> I can't believe it. Why have I not done this before? And, but what made me start paying was during the intro workshops, people were coming up to me at the end and they were writing me a check. Remember checks? Uh, they are writing me a check for, for 50 bucks. And I said, no, 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 tonight's free. And they look at me and they say, uh oh, uh huh. And then they would finish the check. They, would ins they were insisting on paying me. And when that happened, I thought I should probably start charging for this. And then uh, I came up with some eBooks and that built. And, uh, you know, then I had a Facebook page, I had an email list, and it's just gotten more strategic. One, I would say, shifting point for me was also getting help with my social media. There's a colleague of mine, Rebecca Van Dam. If you scroll back two years in my Instagram, which I don't recommend doing, but it's just memes. It's just funny memes, basically, with the occasional... There was, she, she was very sweet. She said, you know, 
you're this marketing person, and maybe there's a strategy you have that I'm not aware of, and I said, I'm so flattered you think I have a strategy. <laughs> I had no strategy at all. But she helped me really think through strategy and planning. How do you want your Instagram to be? What kind of content? And she's, you could try this, or you could do this. Here's some other things I've seen. So we started to build a schedule. So, you know, there's the, now there are the mean Mondays and uh, Tuesdays, though we don't say it explicitly. We call it top Tuesdays internally. I share my top reels, the ones that have been most popular. So we figured out a structure for it. And I had, uh, at a certain point, then I created a, a mentorship, which was for 12 people. They paid 400 US a month. I did that for three or four years. It was wonderful. And then the lockdowns happened. Can't travel, can't do any of my live workshops, which was a big chunk of my income. So I thought, okay, I guess I gotta bring it online. I reached out to my colleague, Bradley Morris, dear friend of mine, and he'd been hounding me for years to do a membership, years, every year. Is this the year you're gonna do it? No, Bradley, not this year. And I knew it was a good idea, but I was just too busy. But suddenly my schedule was open. And so I said, okay. And so we did that, that was December uh, 2023. And that was a real simplification of the business model. Instead of all these things feeling so separate, everything centers around the membership. And, um, and then touring, I toured a lot. I did a lot of workshops, Toronto heavily, I've gone done London a number of times, but I've done, toured around uh, a lot of places, gotten interviewed on a number of podcasts, so I wouldn't say that's the main thing. Gone into, uh, uh, been brought in by my colleagues to talk to their people. And I don't know, there's, there has been in the last few years a critical mass. I don't know what to, where to put my finger on it other than it's just kept going. And my point of view has gotten clearer. And I've noticed certainly a correlation as my point of view lands and gets clearer, things, things grow. Um, yeah, I noticed that when I started to really, my own thinking became clearer, I could see the clarity in the, in the audience as I was talking, like, oh, they get it. But when I was fumbling, I could see them fumbling to understand. Um, I'm trying to think what else has contributed to it. Part of it is just sticking around. Let me have that be the last thought. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, I'm happy to answer. But part of it is just sticking around. There are a lot of colleagues I've had who are gone now. I've been doing this 20 years. You know, it, I was probably one of the original, I don't know, green ethical marketing coaches, which blows my mind to even think that. But I, and then I stuck around, I kept doing it, and I didn't change all the time. I didn't keep shifting what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It's been the same thing since the beginning. It's just gotten better and more refined and more organized. So then what happens is a lot of people, they leave too soon. The way you get to the hot level, you know, in terms of becoming a hub, you have to stick around long enough. The number of times I've gone to refer clients and say, oh, you should talk to this coach. Oh, their website's down. They're not doing that anymore. Damn it, they were the person I referred to for that. But if you stick around, there's a, a kind of critical mass of, of um, goodwill that happens, reputation, and it, it, it just keeps compounding. And then you do hit these inflection points. I don't know how to predict, but it does happen at a certain point. But if you change your niche every two or three years, you never benefit from it. You're always, you know, you're, it's like you're digging the well, you're about to hit water, and then you stop and you start digging another well. Why am I always thirsty? So I don't know if this addresses your question. Or... Yeah, definitely. And I, I, it's so beautiful, that feeling of the point of view gets mm. clearer. And in a way, it's like we become more ourselves and people can get on board with that. You know, that's... Or not. They can or get not. on board with it or not. Yeah, the yeah. clearer we are about our point of view, the clearer it, are, the clearer it, it, are, clearer it is for other people. Is this a fit or not? <laughs> the, the biggest leaps in response I've seen from my clients is when they finally just say the scary thing. When they fall, finally point out the emperor's new clothes, they rant. They just say, I'm sick of this. They call a spade a spade. They name something. Those are the moments when there's a response which sounds something like, oh my God, I thought I was the only one. Thank you for saying it. Thank you for being the one You know who's willing to be honest about this. Uh, yeah, the more candid we are, because what happens otherwise, when we play it safe, I don't want to say anything controversial, 
is it's hard to get a read on the person. So because they're being neutral, they get a neutral response. Yeah? Say it another way, the fear of rejection, the fear that people will say no, has people say maybe. And maybe always turns into no. The confused mind says no. It's just hard to you know, get a read. Yeah. I have a question that's kind of follow into this. Yeah. Has there ever been a moment where you felt the urge to pivot or reinvent? And how have you met that how, if it has come? The, the urge to pivot or reinvent has not come for me, which I, I'm just, I just feel lucky. That's, I'm not, that wasn't a conscious choice. There have been moments where with my day-long workshop, I got fucking sick of it. It was the same workshop every time. I just got tired of hearing myself talk. And I thought I have to find some other way to do it. And I got over that hump. And then eventually I recorded it. But no, I haven't felt a desire to dramatically change or, or, or pivot what I do. Um, for me, it's just gone deeper. And, and that's, that's, not, um, that's just what's happened for me. And I feel fortunate that that's happened. Because uh, I know there are times where you do have to pivot. You do have to change. I'm just saying it's not consequence-free, the pivoting, of course. Um, it's kind of related to that question. And also, um, I think Rose said earlier about seeing, kind of being somewhere, but also having a sense of where you might want to evolve in the future. Mm. Yeah. And um, I guess the simple question, which I've been grappling with, is because I haven't got a website or anything yet started, is like, do I do it in my name or do I do it in a project name? Mm. And our mutual friend Erica, I know, um, you know, Norfolk, probably, mm. she's, her website is, is your right to be, but I know from speaking to her recently that she's feeling like she wants to evolve her work and that that isn't, that that's what she's known for and that's become her brand. So what's your thoughts on Yeah, those? okay, so there, there may come points, right? You're doing your work, you're growing, and then you feel, okay, this is not quite it, I've got to change it somehow. I would just make sure you take the time to really do the deep work. Don't, don't have it be a kind of flailing change this way and that way. Take the time. Really reflect because in order to pivot like that, you're going to have to reach out and tell people. And you can only, I don't know, I think there's a limited number of times you can pivot before people are just like, I don't know what the fuck they do. It keeps changing. So it's worth just like slow your roll a little bit. Don't panic. Keep doing the thing that's bringing you money while you're figuring out the new thing and then you can relaunch it you can say hey everyone i've been doing some real deep reflection and i've got a new thing and by the way you don't have to like it doesn't have to be a binary of and now the old thing is dead and you know here's the new thing it can be i'm starting a little project a little beta test a little on this new thing does anyone want to join in and try it out and you can get people in and you start and you just see do i like it do they like it and you slowly you know you plant the seed of that and it grows and then you you know you can transition over. Okay. Just um, kind of simple kind of. Would you suggest having a web address, which is your name or the kind of the project or concept name? Either it doesn't. I don't think. The, here's the main thing with a website. And I guess all social media handles. I remember that. Mm, easy to remember. That's more important than anything. Just it's got to be easy to remember when somebody's going to go talk about you. It can't be ah yes, their uh, website is. Starbright42 underscore <laughs> unicorn, unicorn, unicorn. You know, it's, it's, it can't be hard to remember. It must be easy to remember. So if your name is very difficult to spell, I would just say caution. Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if, there, if nobody can remember it, one of the things to pay attention to is how people describe you. You ask them, well, how, ask your clients, how do you, what do you tell your friends? You know, or pay attention to how you describe what you do jokingly. I just had tadhargrave.com, and then one day, people, the name marketing for hippies didn't come till 2009, 2010 something, and I just noticed the, I noticed that people were saying, uh, or I meet people that say, what do you do? I say, I do marketing for hippies. It was a joke. <laughs> it was just a joke. It was a funny way of saying it. And then one day I thought, I wonder, I wonder if that website's available. And it was. And I was shocked that nobody had taken it. I was just, wow, I can't believe my luck. Yeah. So it was just available. And, uh, but it's easy to remember. There's a great... Um, if you go on my website, there's two articles worth looking at. One, 
one just called seven ways to name your business, something like this. And the other one, if you just go to marketingforhippies.com slash oxymoronic, one of the things that can make uh, names memorable are you put two contrasting things together. Marketing and hippies don't tend to go together. It's memorable. But the, there's a lot of options. You could name your business after the result you produce, after the problem you solve. You can make it your name. You could uh, name it after uh, the process. You could make up a word. The fuck, you know, it's like a, a, like a Lulu or um, anyways. You know, you can make up. There's a lot of ways to do it. As long as they will remember it when the time comes to talk about it, that's the big thing. Okay, we've got to wrap up. Are these related? Uh, kind of. Okay, hold on. Kind of. Is yours related? Um, no. Okay. It's about pricing.